Hello. If you own one of these devices, then you may be aware that the CPU used, while great for handhelds and 8-bit systems, starts to struggle at 16-bit, most notably with the Super Nintendo. I wanted to show you some settings you can tweak to give a boost in performance to make playing games on these systems a better experience. I'm using a Pocket Go 1 with the Mayu custom firmware, but this process should be the same with other similar devices such as the Pal Kitty V90 and the recent Q20. The main things I want to change are the emulator, the clock speed, and settings inside the emulator, so let me show you how I did that. For the emulator, I want to update SNES 9X to the newest version available, so I went to the SNES 9X 4D for Mayu, GitHub page, and downloaded the latest release, which is this one as of making this guide. I downloaded the SNES 9X 4D file, and used it to replace the file that's on my Pocket Go under Emu's SNES 9X 4D, drag and drop the file in here, and replace the older version. I eject my SD card and plug it back into my device. To change the clock speed, I hit select while hovering over the emulator and go down to the clock speed setting. From here, I can choose a speed different from the 702 default. From what I've gathered, most speeds will cause a crash except for 732 and 798. Some devices aren't able to overclock that high, and some devices aren't able to overclock at all, so you may need to play around with lower speeds and see what works for you. After overclocking, I launch an SNES game and go into the emulator settings. Change these settings so they are as follows. Transparency False This won't render any layers with transparency and improves performance greatly. Full Screen False This sets it to pixel perfect mode, where there is now less screen to render at the cost of a smaller image. Sound Rate 16000 I find this number to be the best balance of performance and audio quality. Stereo Set to False this sets the audio to mono and no longer processes a second audio channel, improving performance. Frame skip set to auto, auto frame skip max 3. This prevents the game from running in slow motion and will momentarily cap the frame rate at 15 when it's necessary. With these changes made, let's see what Super Nintendo is like. Here in the demo mode of F0, I'm getting 40 FPS without any other cars on the road. With transparency off, the only thing I really notice is the power bar where you can see through it when normally you can't. This is the beginning of a Grand Prix race. I'm starting with four other cars near me at 40 FPS, but on takeoff, I drop down to about 35. It tends to stay around 35, but I also see it go up to around 40, so depending on how many cars are around you, it will affect the performance. Here we have Super Mario Kart. This game uses the DSP1 chip to do more advanced Mode 7 scaling and rotation, which is why it's a little bit harder to emulate compared to F0. Here I'm getting about 20 FPS, but it also goes down to around 15 to 17 FPS. As you can see on the bottom screen, the sprites are messed up because the transparent rear view mirror screen is missing, so it just looks like Toad's Hat is driving around, and anything that would be out of view from that rear view mirror is gone from being rendered. Here I'm just driving alone in time trial mode and you can see that performance is much better when it doesn't have to render 7 other racers. Right now I'm getting about 35, almost 40 FPS which is kind of impressive compared to what I was getting before. Here on this track it's a little bit simpler than the one before and because of that I'm getting frame rates of high 40s, low 50s. Here in Super Mario RPG, this game uses the SA1 enhancement chip to help with better processing. Overworld movement can vary on frame rates and battles are locked at 15 FPS because of the auto frame rate we'd set. The game is still running a little bit slow so you would need to set the frame skip to something higher in order to get it to run at full speed. I think this game is a little too intensive for the CPU to handle, so this might be as good as it's going to get on this device. Here in the intro to Final Fantasy VI, I'm getting a frame rate of around 40, and it looks fine, so I'm guessing there's not any layer that's using transparency right now.
Battles are where I start to get a better frame rate. I'm going almost full speed sometimes, but it also drops down to low 40s. There's no transparency on the fire beam sprite, so you can see black bars around it each time I use it. Link to the Past runs great, until you go outside. Hyrule looks a little different. I guess the background uses the transparency, so because we have it turned off, it doesn't render. This is going to be one of those games where you're going to have to keep changing your settings to make sure everything looks good on screen. So with the transparency back on, the game looks good again, but now I'm running at a lower frame rate. Here I turn transparency off and now you can see that the sprites are gone. Kirby's Dream Land 3 uses the SA1 chip like Super Mario RPG so this one's going to be hard to run on this system. Mega Man X1 does not use any enhancement chips, unlike Mega Man X2 and X3, so this is going to be easier to run on this system. Here against this enemy, I get frame drops down to 40. In this section, the frame rate drops down to 40 when I walk over multiple crumbling highway pieces. In Super Mario All-Stars, Mario 1 now runs at full speed a majority of the time, with only occasional frame dips. Here in this clip, I have full screen turned on because it didn't really affect performance that much, so I decided to turn it back on. Here, full screen is turned back off. Mario 3 is running close to full speed as well. In Super Metroid, this introduction section sees frame rates of around 40, 50, and 60. Here in this room where you first fight Ridley, the blue haze that's in front of Samus is gone because of the transparency being turned off. With transparency turned off, the rain here gets corrupted. Transparency is turned back on, but now I'm not running at full speed anymore. Without transparency, there's no scanner here, so it just looks like nothing's happening. And finally, Yoshi's Island. 
This game uses the Super FX 2 chip, and because of it makes it one of the hardest SNES games to run properly. Now Yoshi's Island takes place at night time because the sky has a transparency and we have transparencies turned off. Despite the drawbacks of playing the game like this, it's running a lot better than it was before, so it's up to you whether that's worth it or not. Here the chalk on the chalkboard doesn't show up properly because it uses a transparency. With that, that is how I got SNES games to run better, and how those games perform with these settings changed. I hope I've given you a good idea of what to expect with these changes. The all winner CPU may not be able to handle intensive games, but with some settings changed, you can definitely make it work. The question to ask yourself is if you are fine with the downsides necessary to get it to run Super Nintendo better. If you're fine with the performance I've shown you, then I'd say go ahead and do it. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. That will be it for me. Thank you for watching.